Good morning, everyone. I am Mr. Rishitu Tasfai, your biology teacher. This is grade 11 biology, week 14. The lesson for this week is chapter 34, lesson 2, glands of the endocrine system. Your textbook page 982 all the way to 987. Objectives of the lesson. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify the functions of the major endocrine glands and explain how endocrine glands are controlled. So, under this uh, lesson, we are going to discuss two major sections. The first section is about the human major endocrine glands and the second one will be the control of the endocrine system. Let's start our lesson with the first one which is the major human endocrine glands. As you can see on the diagram on the right here, uh, the major human endocrine glands are scattered, distributed throughout the body, many of them with no apparent connection to each other. Okay, and the major endocrine glands of the endocrine system include the pituitary gland, which is located in the brain, the hypothalamus, which is also located in the brain, the adrenal glands, which are on the top of each uh, kidney, as you can see right here. Uh, the pancreas, okay, the pancreas, which is located here in the thorax. The thyroid gland and the parathyroid gland, both of them uh, located in the neck region. And the reproductive glands, or also called the gonads. The gonads are here the reproductive structures. The ovaries in females and the testes in uh, males. Uh, what are the functions of the major endocrine glands? The human endocrine system regulates a wide variety of activities depending on the type of uh, the endocrine gland. Let's start with the first one, the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland secretes hormones that directly regulate many body functions or controls the actions of other endocrine glands. For this reason, the pituitary gland is usually considered as the master endocrine gland because it controls other endocrine glands. The second one is the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus controls the secretions of the pituitary gland. The third one is the pancreas, which uh, secretes insulin and the glucagon, which help to keep the blood glucose level very stable. The fourth one is the thyroid gland, which has a major role in regulating the body's metabolism. The fifth one, the gonads or the reproductive glands, they serve two important functions. One, the production of gametes or sex cells, and second, the secretion of sex hormones. And the sixth major endocrine gland, the adrenal glands, release hormones that help the body prepare for and deal with stress. The pituitary gland. The pituitary gland is a binge sized structure that hangs on a slender stalk of tissue at the base of the brain. The gland is divided into two parts. These are the anterior pituitary and posterior pituitary. Some of the hormones released by the pituitary control other glands while others affect other types of tissues. As you can see in, uh, in this uh, diagram, the pituitary gland is located at the base of the brain. It hangs at uh, a small uh, stalk which is found at the base of uh, the brain here, uh, just below the hypothalamus. And its uh, secretions control other endocrine glands or other types of tissues. That is why we consider the pituitary gland as the master endocrine gland. Uh, an example uh, illustrating this point is the hormones. Uh, released by anterior pituitary gland okay hormones are released by anti anterior pituitary gland and uh, their function as you ca as it's summarized in this table each of the hormones secreted by the anterior pituitary gland influence other body uh, tissues or other glands okay uh, which uh, substantiate the fact that the pituitary gland is the master endocrine gland 
the hypothalamus the hypothalamus is located inside the brain which is just above the posterior pituitary the hypothalamus which is attached to the posterior pituitary is the link between the central nervous system and the endocrine system the hypothalamus controls the secretion of the pituitary gland directly the activities of the hypothalamus are influenced by hormone levels and other substances in the blood and by sensory information collected by the central nervous system. The hypothalamus contains the cell bodies of neurosecretory cells whose axons extend into the posterior pituitary. The hormones are made in the cell bodies of the hypothalamus and stored in the axons entering the posterior pituitary. When the cell bodies are stimulated, the axons in the posterior pituitary release the hormones into the bloodstream and then the hormones influence other endocrine glands or other tissues. However, the hypothalamus has indirect control of the anterior pituitary, meaning the hypothalamus produces a specific releasing hormone that controls the secretion of each anterior pituitary hormone. That means there is no physical contact between the anterior pituitary and the hypothalamus. Now let's look at the adrenal glands. As you can see in the diagram here, the adrenal glands are situated on the top of each kidney, adrenal gland. The adrenal glands are pyramid shaped structures that sit on the top of each kidney. The adrenal glands release hormones that help the body prepare for and deal with stress. The outer portion of the adrenal gland is called adrenal cortex and the inner part is called adrenal medulla. As we zoom out the adrenal gland, we have two major sections, the adrenal cortex, which is the outer section, and the adrenal medulla, which is the inner section. The outer portion of the uh, adrenal gland produces two dozen steroid hormones called corticosteroids. The heart pounding, anxious feeling you get when excited or frightened, commonly known as the fight or flight response, is produced when impulses from the sympathetic nervous system stimulate the adrenal medulla to release large amounts of epinephrine or adrenaline and norepinephrine. Epinephrine and norepinephrine increase the heart rate and blood pressure. They also cause air passageways to widen, allowing for an increase in oxygen intake and stimulate the release of extra glucose. Pancreas. The pancreas has both exocrine and endocrine function. As an exocrine gland, the pancreas releases enzymes that help digest food. The hormone producing portion of the pancreas consists of clusters of cells called the isolates of Langerhans after their discoverer German anatomist Paul Langerhans. The group of light colored cells uh, in the pancreas are called the isolates of Langerhans. As you can see in this diagram, these light sections, light uh, colored cells are the isolates of Langerhans which produce the endocrine hormones insulin and glucagon. Each isolate includes beta cells which secrete insulin and alpha cells which secrete glucagon. Insulin and glucagon help to keep the blood glucose level stable as shown in the feedback uh, loop of blood glucose regulation. When blood glucose level uh, rise after a person eats, the pancreas releases insulin through the beta cells. Insulin stimulates cells to take glucose out of the blood, preventing blood glucose levels from rising too rapidly and ensuring that glucose is stored for future use. Insulin signals the liver and skeletal muscles to store glucose as glycogen, a storage a form of sugar, and in fat tissue, glucose is converted to lipids. On the contrary, when the level, the level of uh, blood glucose drops, glucagon is released into the bloodstream through alpha cells and glucagon stimulates the liver skeletal muscle and fat cells to release glucose back into the blood helping to raise the blood glucose level back to normal now let's see a condition known as diabetes mellitus what is diabetes mellitus 
When the body fails to produce or properly respond to insulin, a condition known as diabetes mellitus occurs. The very high blood glucose levels that result from diabetes can damage almost every system and cell in the body. There are two types of diabetes mellitus. These are type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. What is type 1 diabetes? Type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disorder that usually develops at childhood before the age of 15. The immune system attacks beta cells, resulting in little or no secretion of insulin. People with type 1 diabetes must follow a strict diet and get daily doses of insulin to keep their blood glucose level uh, in control. On the other hand, type 2 diabetes must commonly develop after the age of 40. In type 2 diabetes, people uh, produce low to normal amounts of insulin, but their cells do not properly respond to the hormone because the interaction of insulin receptors and insulin is inefficient. Now let's look at the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland, as you can see in the diagram here, is located on the trachea. The thyroid gland is located at the base of the neck and wraps around the upper part of the trachea. The thyroid gland produces the hormone thyroxine, which increases the metabolic rate of cells throughout the body, causing cells to become more active, use more energy, and produce more heat. Iodine is needed to produce this hormone thyroxine. Low levels of thyroxine in iodine-deficient infants produce a condition called creatinism, in which neither the skeletal system nor the nervous system develops properly. Iodine deficiency usually can be prevented by the addition of small amounts of iodine to table salt or other food items. If the thyroid gland produces too much thyroxine, a condition called hypo hyperthyroidism occurs. A hyperthyroidism results in nervousness, elevated body temperature, increased blood pressure, and weight loss. On the contrary, too little thyroxine causes a condition called hypothyroidism, which is characterized by low body temperature, lack of energy, weight gain, and uh, a condition called goiter, which is an enlargement of the thyroid gland. As you can see in this diagram, this is normal uh, thyroid gland while this is an enlarged thyroid gland due to lack of thyroxine, a condition called goiter. The thyroid also produces calcitonin, a hormone that reduces uh, blood calcium levels. Calcitonin signals the kidneys to reabsorb less calcium from kidney filtrate, inhibits calcium absorption in the small intestine, and promotes calcium absor absorption into bones. Parathyroid glands. As you can see in this diagram, the parathyroid glands are four glands on either side of the thyroid gland. These glands secrete a hormone called parathyroid hormone, which is an antagonistic hormone to calcitonin. Uh, the parathyroid hormone okay, increases calcium levels by promoting the release of calcium from bone the reabsorption of calcium in kidneys, and the uptake of calcium from digestive system. The last major endocrine gland that we are going to see are reproductive glands, also called the gonads. Here you can see the testes in human males. The gonads, ovaries, and testes are the body's reproductive glands. The gonads serve two important functions. These are the production of gametes and the secretion of sex hormones. In females, ovaries produce eggs and secrete a group of hormones called estrogens, while in males, the testes produce sperm and secrete a hormone called testosterone. Now to the second major section of this lesson, which is the control of the endocrine system. How are endocrine glands controlled? Like most systems of our body, the endocrine system is regulated by feedback mechanisms that function to maintain homeostasis. Now, let's look at the first example of control of the endocrine system, which is maintaining water balance, or also called osmoregulation, as illustrated in this feedback loop. The hypothalamus contains cells that are sensitive to the concentration of water in the blood. As you lose water, the concentration of dissolved materials or solutes in your blood rises. 
the hypothalamus signals the pituitary gland to release a hormone called ADH. ADH is carried by the blood to the kidneys where it slows the removal of water from the blood accompanied by sensation of thirst. When you take a drink, most of that water is quickly absorbed into the blood to restore the amount of water in the blood. On the other hand, when the water content of the blood rises, the pituitary releases less uh, ADH. Less ADH causes the kidneys to remove water from the blood. The blood is then restored to its proper concentration. So in conclusion, a water deficit stimulates the release of ADH causing the kidneys to conserve water, while an excess of water causes the kidneys to eliminate the excess of water as a component of urine. The second example of control of the endocrine system is controlling metabolism. The activity of the thyroid gland is controlled by the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary gland. When the hypothalamus senses that the thyroxine levels are low, it secretes thyrotropin releasing hormone TRH, which stimulates the anterior pituitary to secrete thyroid stimulating hormone TSH. TSH then stimulates the release of thyroxine by the thyroid gland, which inhibits the secretion of TRH and TSH and stops the release of additional thyroxine. This feedback loop keeps the level of thyroxine in the blood relatively constant. Hypothalamus is also a control center of body temperature regulation. When the core body temperature begins to drop, the hypothalamus produces extra TRH. The release of extra TRH stimulates the release of TSH by the anterior pituitary, which stimulates the release of additional thyroxine by the thyroid gland, which is located here. The thyroxine increases oxygen consumption and cellular metabolism. The increase in metabolic activity helps the body to maintain its core temperature. Finally, let's answer the following lesson check questions. Question number one. How is the hypothalamus an important part of both the nervous system and the endocrine system? The correct answer is the hypothalamus serves as the body's link between the nervous system and the endocrine system. Its activities are influenced by substances in the blood and information from the nervous system. Question number two. Explain how the endocrine system helps maintain homostasis. The answer is, the endocrine system helps maintain homeostasis by signaling the body to respond to internal and external stimuli and by using feedback mechanisms. And finally, on a hot day, you play soccer for an hour and lose a lot of water in sweat. List the steps that your uh, body takes to regain homeostasis. Sample answer. The hypothalamus signals the posterior pituitary to release ADH and causes thrust sensation. Then, the ADH slows removal of water from the body, and a thrust sensation stimulates you to replace the lost water. Thank you for watching. See you very soon.